If you're searching up the F-14 on YouTube because you just watched Top Gun Maverick, hit the subscribe button. There's a lot of people doing that nowadays, and this is DCS World, the most realistic simulator of the F-14 Tomcat. So, if you actually are searching that today, you're in for a treat. In today's episode, we're flying the F-14B, taking off of the Super Carrier, splashing bandits, and for the first time, flying with an actual player in the backseat playing as the Rio. I was a little inspired, I gotta be honest, about making this video because I just came back from watching Top Gun Maverick, and pretty dang good movie. Pretty dang good. I went in with kind of average expectations, and I came out really liking the movie. So as soon as I got home, of course, I jumped on DCS, jumped into the kitty, and started the engines. Oh, look at that. The, the Hornet's taking off. Roger. They're prepping him to go. That's so cool. Oh, he's telling him to spool up his engines. He's spooling up his engines. He's on afterburner. And... And go! Wee! Bonk! <laughs> oh, that's so sick. That's very well done. That's so cool, dude. <laughs> uh, Alright, well, we're starting up the Tomcat. I'm gonna try to do the same thing. I don't know if I need to communicate with them or anything. I've got... I, I'm, I know most of the hand signals. Alright, let's get our weapons on. We're gonna run the AIM 9 M Sidewinders on the sides. We're gonna run the uh, Sparrows, M9, er, AIM 7 MHs, and then four Phoenixes in the center. So, this will be my first super carrier takeoff. Uh, so, if I mess anything up, feel free to yell at me in the comment section. I won't take any offense to it. Yep, he's telling me to go left. Keep going left. Oh, okay, he's telling me straight now. We'll straighten out. When do I stop? When do I stop? Keep going. He's telling me to keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Man, I feel like I'm on top of it. Man. Okay, stop. Stop. Okay, he's saying extend my wings. Pull that emergency wing sweep forwards. Turn the master set on. Wings are set to auto. Okay, my wings are out, sir. Uh, oh, I think that means kneel. So I need to kneel down. The entire front aircraft, front part of the aircraft, kneels down here. I don't know what comes next. I haven't taken the F-14 off in a long time on the carrier. Uh, I think that means go forwards. I think that means go forwards. Keep going forwards? Okay. I probably need to do my flaps as well. There we go. Okay, I'm in. Let me do my flaps down. I think all the way. Alright. What do I do now? <laughs> okay, he's saying spool up. So, on the F-14 Bravo, on the F-14B variant, you actually don't go afterburners when you spool this thing up. You just go to uh, mill power, or actually right below mill power. I think, uh, I don't know if we actually go to the mill power line, or if we go higher. I'm gonna go higher, because I don't know exactly where I need to go, but I'm gonna go about there. And we should be set to go. I'm gonna turn my mirrors on for extra immersions. Oh, and then I need to do a salute. Oh, I don't know if I have my salute bound. Oh, there's my salute bound. Okay. So <laughs> I throttled down and I saluted. All right. And here we go. Goodbye. Woo! <laughs> That's so cool. All right, flaps up all the way. Uh, gears up. So cool, man. So simple. I don't know why. Just the guys walking around. You really feel like you're you're on that carrier. That's sick. Alright, we're gonna trim this out because we are really flying now. 
Uh, we're gonna go northeast. Wow, that is a full airspace. Look at that. That is a extremely full airspace. <laughs> Jester's giving me the whole picture. I just found these cruise missiles that are flying above the water. Like, I checked my map, and there's just a line of P-700s. They're called shipwrecks. I'm guessing they're an anti-ship cruise. I'm kind of curious as what they are launched from, so I'm going to look it up while you guys are watching it. P-700 cruise. Uh, it looks like it's from a, a, a battleship, which is interesting. It's a 10-meter missile with swept back, swept back wings and tail. Yep, there's little wings on it. It weighs 7,000 kilos. can be fitted with a 750 kilo warhead or an FAE warhead. What's an FAE warhead? Oh, a thermal barrack. Ooh. It was produced from 1985 to 1992. Its place of origin was the Soviet Union. Oh. Oh, it's in service still. For some reason, we have blue four P-700s flying through the air. I don't know where they would have come from. Oh, we have a little ship over here. I see. I can't click on it, but there is one of our ships way over here. I'm curious to know where these are flying, though. We'd only be able to see about 12 miles, but I can't see anything on the horizon. I don't know. All right, we should be... Oh, yeah, we're at 30,000, 33,000 feet. We can... Uh, oh, we're going almost straight east as well. We need to turn north slightly. Sorry, I got, I got a little bit busy looking at the cruise missiles. They were cool. But, yeah, I thought with the... Um, thought with the new Top Gun movie coming out that I'd check out the Tomcat. It's not a spoiler, I guess, if you're really, if you haven't watched the trailer, you might get spoiled, so skip the next 30 seconds, but in the trailer, there was a Tomcat, so I had to go watch the movie, and damn was I pleased, damn was I pleased. Fun fact, though, I think there's only a, f uh, I, I think all the functional Tomcats of the U.S. military got destroyed. I think we blew them up so that Iran or whoever we sold them to couldn't have any of our precious Tomcat parts. So we heard they were doing some some damage with their Tomcats. We didn't want them. We, we wanted to force them to either make their own or not use our Tomcats anymore. Yeah, Tomcat's a pretty cool aircraft. All the history behind it's really neat. If you ever want to go look up a documentary, there's a lot of documentaries, little, little like history channel things about the Tomcat. What, what I really like nowadays is there's a, there a lot of YouTubers that are going into military history. And so like there's like 30 minute long videos of like, how the F-16 was created, and they're better quality than most of those TV History Channel sort of documentaries, and they're made by single-person YouTubers, which is super neat. Lantern, Draco 11, uh, single ship F-14 Bravo, checking in for cap. I am uh, Bulls 44 for, or sorry, 210 for 44. There's also, um, the Gulf of Sidra incident, which is cool, uh, there's a channel called Operations Room that covered it about a month ago, where two Tomcats engaged. Trigger 1 1, Major. Target for us, 044 42, 21,000 feet northwest to Progwood. 044, he said? Draco 1 1. Um, yeah, two, two F 14s engaged two SU 22s, if I remember correctly. Um, they they shot the F-14s with like a some sort of heat-seeking missile, and the F-14s immediately reacted, um, and and shot them both down. What's cool about that incident as well is that at one point the F-14s were just scaring the enemy aircraft. I think the Libyan aircraft. Um, they were just scaring them by flying up to them, taking photos of them, and giving them the middle finger as they were flying by. Like how insane! In modern, co or not modern combat, but you know, 40 years ago, there was air combat where you could fly close enough to the enemy to give them the middle finger. <laughs> I'm getting something up on the radar. It's like a flanker. Cause I'm getting MiG-29 nails. There is a bandit. Bra, zero three five seventy-seven miles. Seventy-seven miles. Yep. Okay. Bra, zero three five fifty-eight miles. We'll focus on those. That bandit's 25,000 perfectly. He's perfectly at 25,000. Huh. 
he might be he must be altitude holding that might be like an I don't know if AWACS is or oh, it might be a refueling tanker if he's flying perfectly at 25 he's still at 25 so he's on autopilot if he keeps turning left the white one then that's going to be a tanker Yep, that's him. 47 miles. Rocking target, 44 miles. Oh, he's low. He's very low. Oh, there's more bandits beneath me. There's more beneath me. Uh, apparently. Okay, let's get the one that's closer. Third, two, two, yeah, 22 miles. Rocking him. Whoa, I got dirt at one o'clock. And whoa, my SA6. Okay, these two were just here. Copy Copy. See if I can spot them. Um nails. Uh, might have to get down low. Oh, oh, there they are, there they are. Where are you? 15 miles. 15 miles, okay. I'll try to shoot a sparrow. See if that works at this range. Um, it's, it's weird because the bandit to my right just totally disappeared. I really don't know where he could have gone. But we're going to catch up to these guys. I'm going to drop my bags. We're out of fuel on them, anyways. Don't need them anymore. I'm dropping tanks. Oh. Wait. Oh no, these these flankers are going for our A-10s. Yep. Okay, 10 miles. At 16,000, Fox 3. Let's hope it hits. You know, I'm gonna fire two. I don't trust just one Phoenix. Especially against that possible notch. That will definitely happen if he's lower than us. Come on, Phoenix. Come on, Phoenix. Don't miss. Don't miss. Splash. Splash one flanker. Where's the second one, Jester? Second. Second one. He's to our front. Is that him? That's him. Fox 3. 9 miles. Shit. I'm popping flares. I feel like he shot... That was radar guided. Or, or heat seeking. Nope, that's our missiles. Where's he? Oh, I got him? Oh, the Phoenix got him. Draco 1 1 splash flanker. Whew! Whew! Uh, two sparrows left. I'm RTB. Draco 1 1, affirm. Draco 1 1, thank you. Okay. 2 1 1 for 18. Cool. Oh my gosh. I thought I wasn't going to get out of that one. I couldn't find him, and I was using the within visual range horizontal scanner, horizon scan, to try to find him. And, uh, oh my gosh, the, the, it was locking the Phoenixes. But the Phoenixes had luckily already gone pit bull. Those were STT locks. Which means if I pull off, it's a very high chance that they miss. Um, I guess at that range, maybe not. And I was firing two Phoenixes per target. I think I just need to do that more often, is two Phoenixes per, per bandit. Because I've been having a lot of trouble with Phoenixes lately. And uh, that was that was nice. Having two Phoenixes per bandit uh, worked out pretty dang well. And we're alive. We're alive. So even though, yeah, it could be wasteful, recently I felt like that was necessary, you know? 
Yeah, that first bandit definitely shot, um, definitely shot a Fox 2 at us. And I dumped the thrust and just started popping flares like crazy because I knew there was a solid chance that if I did that, or if I didn't do that, I would get killed really easily. Okay, Krasnodar. Milan Krasnodar Peshkovsky. Whew! What a fun plane to fly. Very different than the others. Just very, very different, but very fun. Alrighty. Gears down. Flaps down. Oh no, not the SA6. Not when I'm landing. Why is I'm landing game? Must you send an SA6 my way? I really hope that's not at me. I hope I'm notching it. I should be notching it. Oh gosh, that's terrifying. Okay, I think they hit the water. I think we're good. We're just doing a really shallow approach. A very shallow approach. I need to get up. Hey, I mean, a Sam was coming at me, okay? A Sam was... I had to evade the Sam as we came in. Come on, slow down, slow down. Oh, come on, slow down. <laughs> this thing just floats with the flaps, dude. The flaps make it so lifty. All right. I'm going to do wheel brakes and pull back on stick all the way. This thing slows down pretty quick. Yeah, if I go to the spectator cam, you can see when I pull back on the on the stick just how much air brake we have. <laughs> just shoves those rear gears into the ground. Should we do the F-14A for a round? This is the actual Top Gun Tomcat. Um, the thing about the A model... It's the same exact thing, except its engines are entirely different. So its engines are an extremely underpowered uh, engine compared to the F-14B over here. So you actually had to do a lot more for the F-14A to get it off the carrier. I think these did actually run afterburner when they left the carrier. Um, the F-14 Bravo does not, because it's got the much better engine. I'm, I'm going to look up really quick which exact engine this had. So the F-14A had a T-30 engine. Um, or TF-30, sorry. So there were actually F-14s that were built after the F-14As, but most of the F-14s, I'm pretty sure, um, were, were just upgraded F-14As. Is that another F-14A? Oh, it is. I wonder who else is flying F-14As. Oh, that's Technedium. Hey, I actually know Technedium. I met him yesterday. I was flying Tomcats yesterday. He was on the server. I might I might say hi. Hi, CS Com check. Good check. Uh, so we're ready to go. I've got uh, two Sparrows, four Phoenixes, one AIM-9, or two AIM-9Ms, and uh, we're uh, F-14A, so we're we're going full Top Gun right now. Okay, sounds good. I haven't uh, reeled in a while, but I think I still remember the basics. This is my first day actually using the Super Carrier module, so it's pretty fun. Yeah, it is indeed pretty nice. Very um, uh, immersion. Yeah. Can't speak. Like, it builds immersion. Definitely worth it. Also, I definitely now forget to extend my wings when I don't have the little people to tell me to do it. <laughs> Goes that hornet. Whee! And he's saying go forwards. This engine's a little less powerful than the F-14B's engine, so it's uh it's harder to work with. It's also very delayed. It's very delayed power. Oh come on, give me forwards. 
Gosh, the moment of inertia on this launch bar is a lot. There we go, hooked. Whew. Spooling up. Salute. <laughs> Flaps up. Gears up. Plus, if you look at the TD, I can't. Not actually get in the right mode first. I can show you stuff with this little circle. Wait, what? I'm looking at the. Oh, I see that. Oh, that's cool. Super neat. We've got a friend at our seven o'clock. Yeah, I don't know how he got out here. Those three bags is how he got out here. <laughs> okay, well, I avoided the first pitfall, which is that the radar back here will show you that it's working, even though it's not. Wow. If you don't flick this little switch in x -Men. like you have the little oscilloscope where it shows you like the scan pattern going back and forth, and that's all fake because it'll show you that even if it's not on the uh, transmit. Huh, interesting. Oh, look at him go. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, and of course, the little oscilloscope doesn't actually have any markings on it or tell you what the different lines mean or anything. You just have to remember that. Yeah, it's all in the 700-page textbook. You're fine. So we get a little closer, maybe 35 miles? Yeah, I'll probably, just because of the way the Phoenix has been acting, I'll probably shoot like 30. I agree with your uh, observations yesterday. They are extremely draggy, especially at low altitudes. Yeah, I watched one of the ones that I shot after it went off the rail, and it was on the deck, and it just went down to you know 300 knots in 10 seconds or something. And if a flanker chaffs and notches barely at all, even like a bad notch, it will totally throw it off. It's it's just so vulnerable to that. Okie dokie. Uh, all right, Fox three. Fox 3. Times 2 away. Let's crank right. Let's maybe go into a gentle dive. Copy. That's because the, uh, the notch one. filter turns off when they're above us. Gotcha. I see one splashed. Oh, there's two splash. All right, there's a third northeast. Nails from that third. Box three. Don't think that fox was good. It's going in a straight line down. Oh, he's at uh, 8,700. It's, it's guiding. It's doing something. Okay. Splash. Nice. The uh, calm switch is uh, the same on pretty much every plane. Oh, listen to the engines back there. They're all delayed. We do have a buddy right next to us, so hopefully he can uh, deal with the second one. I'm going to crank left on this first shot. I'm going to shoot at 20... 
eight miles and then crank left. And I'll dive as well. He's at 36,000. He's above us. Actually, I'm going to shoot at 30 miles if he's at that high. Anyways, we're out of the radar. Turning off. I'm gonna reapproach with the sparrow. Don't think that splashed. Okay, try to STT. There's a second one to the left of him, actually, I think, unless that's a data link ghost. Radar uh, didn't find yep, anything? Yep, okay. Let's go for that right. Thirty-four thousand higher than us. He's marking straight front. I might be able to just uh, horizontal. I got him with horizontal. 10 miles, Fox 1. He splashed our friendly. He just got hit, I think, but he's still going. Nah, he's smoking. I think the missile is out of energy. Got it, yep. I'm gonna try to catch this guy. He looks like he's got an engine out. He's he's diving. This will probably notch it. Uh, actually, missile's still doing something. Oh, he hit the ground. Alright, old RTB. Is it speeding up? That was weird. Huh. The engine RPM went up, even though I clearly was pulling it down. That was really weird. Maybe it's something to do with ground effects? I don't know. Yeah, or maybe the AOA that we were increasing or something. Uh, maybe the engines can't take a certain AOA, kind of like... Uh, um, like, a, like a VIG installing. I don't know, it was weird. I uh, definitely was lowering the RPMs and then it just started to raise RPMs for some reason. I'm looking for him, Jester. I can't see him though. We've got a bandit. Frogfoot, 11 o'clock high, 4 miles, 460, 1 o'clock high. Aha. 410, speed 410, 12 o'clock high. Fox 1. 12 o'clock high. Look at that sparrow go, jeez. Damn, that sparrow is fast. Oh my gosh. Wow. I, I'm not really used to the aerodynamics of the sparrow. What the heck? That thing was flying. That thing was going. It went. Do a Fox 3 from about 15 miles. That looks like 21 miles, actually. Get 
get ready. There's a friendly Hornet, 11 o'clock low, 3 miles, Bandit is down. There goes the Phoenix, look at it go. It's getting closer, I don't know if it's going to catch him though. Okay, box three. All right, I want to watch this one now. All right, he's dead now. Hundred percent. Whoa! <laughs> Jeez, dude. 